Hello there and welcome to this new video analyzing and forecasting label data in Tableau. So today I have brought a new data set that we can explore and analyze in Tableau as a small project and learn some of the interesting things about Tableau. So uh, if I talk about the data set, here is a data set which I am using and uh, if you see it has just the two columns one is the data sorry the date and another is value and we will going to look at with this just one column the different analysis one can make when analyzing the data so by looking at the data you can clearly see first of all this is a labor force monthly data of Australia and uh, in this data you got two values the date if I look at the date that is April 30 then March 30 then Feb 28 and uh, 31st of January 2014 so this looks like an end date because if you go down it is to the year 2013 2012 so it's a monthly data that is clear and uh, it is starting from the first of uh, 31st of January 2001 so it's a data from 2001 to 2014 however you have only the first four months of the 2014 all right so if we have this information what we can do with this data let's go ahead and see well the first thing is um, we can analyze what is the yearly quarterly and monthly trend well we have only the monthly data so how you can analyze the yearly and quarterly trend well let's see how Tableau really helps us in doing that so if I go over here and uh, import the file which is the CSV file so we will going to click on text file and within that we have this labor force monthly data if I click open the data set is coming over here in this section and down there you have the date and value so the date represents the date what we had seen in the excel sheet and the value is their relative value just to analyze the data we can go on to the sheet one and here in the dimension you will get the date and in the measure you just get the value so we just have two columns but you will see what are the interesting things that one can do so the first thing is how you can analyze the yearly quarterly and monthly so for that uh, we will take the date over here and by default it picks up the year so if I bring the value over here clearly shows a good trend up until 2013 on an uptrend and then down you have the 2014 value and the answer for this should be because when we looked at the data the data for 2014 is only for the first four months so that's why this value is uh, going down so what you can do to remove this is right click and uh, come over here and exclude this 2014 value now the trend is pretty clear and uh, whatever we have excluded has come over here in the filters so now what we are seeing is the yearly data if we want to see the quarterly data we can come over here and click on the quarter if we want we can remove the year and just see the quarters so q1 q2 q3 q4 but it is an aggregated value of all the years so what you can do is come over here and say quarter like this so now you have the q q2 so it's basically the squeeze value so if i what i'll do is if i say fit width or maybe like entire view on this side so yeah i'm just trying to display all of the values that is basically coming over here standard okay so somehow the values are not coming but uh, the values are basically 2001 q2 q3 q4 and so on and so forth and if you want to see the monthly data you can expand over here and again you know uh, the data is coming in the form of the year which is a bit surprising why it is coming like this or what i can do is uh, i can drag this back 
and take date and over here um, I can take quarter or maybe control C I can expand like this and here I say the fit width yeah so now it is coming q1 q2 q3 and q4 and similarly you can expand the month information in the month information will come like this so uh, sometimes just need to experiment a little bit based on how we want to display but it doesn't look like we are getting a lot of uh, output from the month what i can do is remove the year and see um, but yeah if we remove the year problem is you just get the q1 value which is an aggregated of so many years so if i press ctrl c you will get back the year and now uh, we see that there is an uptrend and in some of the month there is a downtrend and we can see if it is like consistent so for example over here this is august again this is the downtrend is in august what is that august and over here august so august looks like uh, the, the time frame and even over here august is looks like a time frame when the there is a dip in the labor market so one can really go in and check what is really going on in the august and uh, and getting uh, you know the data is going down so that's one thing that we can analyze from this data um next another thing interesting is over here in february there is an uptick over here in February there is an uptick and if I look at another fab which is this there is a uptick a small but there is an uptick so August and fab looks like some some months which is uh, pretty interesting and worth looking more into so that's first um, next is the what is YOI growth so for that what we can do is bring again the date so that's another calculation that we are producing from that just one column so we can bring in the value again we can right click and exclude over here we will come to quick table calculation for the yoy and yoy over year over year growth is something what we can calculate so now you can see a different chart altogether which shows you the growth and growth was very good up until like 2005 there was a dip in 2006 and 2007 and 2008 there was a bit of an uptrend and after that there is a serious downtrend maybe because of that recession which which had hit uh, i think at the start or at the end of the 2008 and after that uh, you know the labor market has not really recovered from the growth perspective that's what it shows so that's a YOY growth uh, ca calculation or the metric that we can analyze. The next is smoothing the series with moving average. So moving average is a pretty interesting feature. So if I look at the date um, and over here, if I just look at the quarter and over here, the value and I will just right click and exclude. So uh, moving average is mainly for the values which are pretty uh, noisy that means going up and down a lot and if you have that sort of value so for example if I just change this to a month there is some noise as you can see and uh, the more we go on the granular side the more noise we will going to get and that's the reason we create the moving average if i just go over here on the sum value come to quick table calculation and click on the moving average so it has smoothed the series but we don't know by how much so what we can do is come over here and click on edit table calculation and the moving calculation and the average is the previous two values now what you can do is take previous three previous four or previous five that really depends on the subject matter expertise as well as how much you want to smooth but the more you smooth the more data points you will going to lose from the start so that is the only trade-off that you need to make when you are doing the moving average
So this mean the right now what is going over here on this line is that this is the previous five data points and the previous five data points as you know is a monthly data points that means previous five months data information has gone and you have the data from the sixth month or right from the start the sixth data point that you have is over here which is the smoothed value by the moving average. So if I just close this, this looks like a much more smoothed line. So that's a smoothed line we sometimes calculate to better understand the trend or by removing the noise. So this can be an interview question that if you need to remove a noise from the data, what are the options? What are the things that you will do? And one of the things is applying moving average. So let's move on to our next um, think is or the next analysis how much is the variation in data or if I just how much is the variation in it I I just realized that I uh, read it too quickly uh, and may not be a suitable for a beginner so that's why I did it again so how much is the variation again I'll take date I'll take value and I remove this and exclude so right now that's how the values are going so to create a variation, there is a variance formula, variation, variation, so which is variance of population. Population means the entire data. And if you just take VAR, that basically the variance from the sample data. So variance of value, we'll click OK. And if I just change the variation, sum of value to variation, so that's how the variation is the variation of uh, 8000 well so based on the count uh, in the year 2001 the variation is 8000 uh, again 7800 4425 that means there is a lot of fluctuations in the data points that has been collected over a period of different month and the more variation in the data explains that uh, there is a lot of problems or the lot of things which is going on otherwise it should have been pretty consistent so over here as you can see it is consistently going down uh, that indicates that though the variation is going down but is it matching up with our year over year growth so one can see that even the growth is going down and with that variation is going down that means low and low jobs are coming and that is inconsistent with the variation of the data so variation is one metric which basically explains how much there is a noise or how much there is an ups and downs into the data and you have even the standard deviation and the formula is same so as an exercise what you can do is take the standard deviation and uh, analyze the data from the standard deviation perspective now important thing is that uh, standard deviation is altogether different metric when it comes to the interpretation so be very very careful in terms of how you interpret the standard deviation and i would uh, and if you have any find any problem or anything let me know in the comments and uh, i will help you uh, understand from that from the standard deviation perspective um, after that uh, come back coming back to the slide and the create new calculated column which has the existing value shifted below y1 so pretty interesting right it can be an interview question again that uh, in the when the time series forecasting you do you basically move the values one level down uh, which is basically uh, for the creation of naive model if you don't know so naive model is a basic model what it says is that in time series forecasting the previous value is the best reflector of the next value and that's why we take that the previous value will going to repeat itself for the next month and that's what what we are trying to do with the shifting of value by one that means the month january month value will come in the fab month and that's what we will assume from the naive or the basic model that this will be our forecast for the next month so how we can do that let's come over here create calculated field and shifted value over here what we will do is uh, use lookup um lookup expression uh we will take value by minus one 
I guess we need to aggregate this. Yeah, sum of value. Sum of value by minus one. Now it is fine. Click OK. Um, so this is our shifted value. So what I can show you is take the dates in rows, uh, take the values over here, take the shifted values again over here, and you can clearly see that 116 is coming over here, 117 is coming over here. And the idea is that the the existing value that you have is the best reflector for the next year, which is 116. And if you see, that is somehow true as well, because the value from 116 has just changed to 117. So in time series forecasting, this is called the naive model. So, so that basically requires that uh, you apply the model on these two data points and see uh, based on the metric, which is the mean absolute error or the mean squared error and all uh, if you don't know i have posted videos on that and you can look the previous videos which which will help you understand what i'm really de describing if, if you have not heard a lot about the time series forecasting okay so once we are here what we can do is what will be the forecast for next five years cool pretty easy should not be a much of an issue until unless you want to go in statistics and really identify what is going on all right because that's where most of the uh, stuff happens which is out maybe out of your comfort zone because it was uh, for me as well out of the comfort zone but that's where all the magic was happening when we understand the statistic but for now what we can do is take the forecast put it over here that's a forecasting which is coming for 2013 147 for 2014 149 and if you want we what we want basically the next five years but right now it is showing you 2013 value is anywhere there but 2014 value is something which is interesting to see so what i can do to uh, to bring the next five years value is right click over here um going to the forecast option and I will say exactly one, two, three, four, five, actually six, because 2013 is something we will going to take already. So now from 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So that's the forecast we can produce along with the confidence interval. So what we can do is to, to basically have them the describe option is the describe forecast so this is basically the describing the forecast and it is showing you that there must there if there is any seasonal effect what is the contribution of trend and seasonality the quality is good change from initial period initial value so on and so forth and over here this is the models that uh, that one has taken these are the quality metrics as i was saying just few minutes before like mean absolute error mean absolute percentage error and so root mean squared error and and smoothing coefficient that has been used and what sort of model so level is additive trend is additive and seasonal is additive so there is an additive and multiplicative uh the time series forecasting but you really need to understand about it as i said they are in my previously published videos so that's pretty much all i wanted to discuss in this uh, 20 minute exercise case study or a small project if you will and uh, talk about how you can really analyze with just one data point what are all the things that you can do well that's not the end of the thing because once you are being more and more creative you can do more and more things so let me know in comments what do you really think about the other things we can do with this data enlighten me i mean uh, the more you will talk to me in the comments some better videos i will be able to produce so let me know what do you think other things that can be done with this data set and i will happy to consider that in my next future or the future videos till then thank you so much for watching this video and please don't forget to share with your friends and colleagues